The secret world leaves its mark on all who dwell in it. There are no normal people in Kingsmith, no matter how they may seem, and none embody this more than Deputy Andy. Hello, welcome to Questions, where I dig into the secret world, not seeking answers, but seeking the right questions to ask. Today I want to look into everyone's favorite blue-eyed cinnamon roll, Andy Gardner, aka Deputy Andy. What is actually going on behind those bright blue eyes? He comes off at first as simple, even naive. However, for all his good cheer and insistence that the town is normal and safe, he constantly drops references to horrific things that have happened. Human sacrifices, cults. He seems to be aware of just how dark the town can get, but maybe he isn't even aware of his awareness. As an officer of the law, he would know about all the darker, more occult crimes that take place in this city, but he still acts surprised when he puts it all together while talking to you. Could he possibly know more than he lets on? After all, he's certainly seen the darker side of this town, seen it from a very young age. He talks in a roundabout way about his father, but none of what we hear is good. When he says his father wore masks, it almost sounds literal, or could he be referring to himself? and the seeming mask of naivete he puts on. There are also darker hints about Andy, that he might have a violent, even vengeful streak. A look at a file on the computer shows that Sheriff Bannerman is reluctant to leave a child rapist alone with him. As heinous as that crime is, as an officer of the law, he would be expected to protect that criminal, at least until they see trial. So why is Sheriff Bannerman afraid of what he might do? Unless it's happened before. Unless the worst suspects tend to end up falling down the stairs or, or killing themselves in their cells. If not, then why would the Sheriff not trust Andy? She wouldn't be concerned unless there was cause for concern. Does Andy have a pattern of violence? because his father certainly did. From a police report on the sheriff's computer, witnesses saw him drowning Andy's kittens at Journey's End. That's an act so horrifically cruel, it's really hard to contemplate even. However, all the witnesses were intimidated into silence. When talked about what happened to his father, Andy almost comically fails to care. Andy's never one to skimp on details or failed to talk about something. But he doesn't really talk about how his father met his end. How did Dave Gardner die? Might Andy himself have had something to do with it? It'd be hard to blame him, to be honest. Still, all these questions paint Andy in a much darker shade than he appears at first. Still, he's an heroic character. Talking to Moose, we find out that Moose only survived the fog in Siren Song because Andy held him back. Moose even points out how, alone among the townsfolk, the fog just didn't seem to affect Andy. Why not? How did he alone shrug it off so completely? I mean, is he just that single-minded? Uh, I'm not so sure. There's definitely more going on with Andy than he appears at first. Oh, and uh, speaking of Moose, I guess I can't really talk about Andy without asking the big question. You know, the elephant in the room. Is Andy gay? Thank you for watching this episode of Questions. If you think you have the answers, then discuss it in the comments. If you enjoyed this, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you did not, then leave a comment calling me a cuck.